This video is an update of my last model railroad turntable video. So this is more of a part two. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what I've done since my last video and how the turntable is currently progressing. I've made a lot of improvements to the turntable design, but I think the most important one is finishing the control panel. So inside here, I have an Arduino Mega, um, and I also have three relays, which I'll talk about here in a second. Um, but let's explain what's going on in front of the control panel. So here I have a potentiometer, and this potentiometer um, lets you change the speed that the turntable is actually spinning, uh, and that's really good whenever you're programming the tracks, which I'll show you in a second. This potentiometer controls the direction of the turntable, so it spins the turntable clockwise or counterclockwise, and the lights are just there to kind of give you some feedback on what's going on. This is the program button, and I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, this is the head or tail selector switch, and these are all the program buttons I have. So right he now I have uh, 12 program buttons, but what this selector switch allows me to do is it allows me to program each one of these 12 buttons as a position, and then I can flip it around and then program a second position to each one of these buttons. So it's a it allows me to use or to program 24 spaces using 12 buttons. And it's really easy to program, so how you do it is you turn the potentiometer and get the turntable wherever you want it to be, and then after you got, have it where you want, you hold the program button and then hit a position, and now that position is programmed. And if you wanted to program it for the tail position, you just flip the red light over, move it to another position, hold the program button, press it again. So like I said before, now this one button can do two different positions based on where the selector switch is. Um, there are three relays up here, uh, and they're built into the enclosure. And what those relays do is they change the polarity of the turntable track based on the position of the turntable. So if your turntable does a full 180 degrees, you need the polarity of the track to flip so that whenever the train comes off the turntable back onto the track, it doesn't short out. So there's three relays built in here, and um, it, it does that automatically. It's all programmed in here. And now I'm going to put up a picture of what the inside of this looks like. I don't want to take it apart because it's a little bit tight in there, and taking it apart and putting it back together makes me a little nervous every time. So now that you've seen the basics of the control panel, I'm going to show you how I program a track. So let's say I want the turntable to be programmed to this track. And it's pretty easy to do. All you do is you turn the potentiometer to the correct direction and get it going close to the track. And then once you have it close, you take the speed and you turn it down, and then you get it directly lined up. So I'm going to give you a close-up of me lining this uh, track up. And that's exactly where I want it. And now that I have the tracks lined up, I can program it. And again, it's really easy. I just hit the program button and tap the position, and that light flashes and let me know it's programmed. Um, I can manually move it now. And if I hit the button, it goes back to the program position. And I'm actually going to put the camera on top of the track and do that movement again so you can see how accurate this is. I'm pretty dang happy with that. So now that I've showed you how to program the tracks, I'm going to give you a demonstration of why these relays are important. So I've got a train on the track, and I'm going to back it up onto the turntable. All right, and then off camera, I programmed it so that it should do a 180 whenever I press the button. And before it gets to its final position, we should hear a little click, which is the relays flipping inside the control panel. Bingo, got it. All right, so now let's see if we can back off the train. There we go. So the great thing about Arduinos is that they have something called EEPROM, or Electronic Programmable Memory. And just, just Google it, because I can't explain it as well as Google can, but what it, what it does is it allows you to save values from the Arduino inside a solid state storage, so that whenever you unplug the controller and plug it back in, all of your program tracks will stay. So since we already have this position programmed, I can unplug this, it will automatically home, and then all of these positions still should be the same. So let's try it out. 
takes a second to boot back up. All right, so now the turntable is doing its homing. So I'll explain that a little bit now. On the corner of the turntable, you can see all these wires, and these will all be hidden in the final design. But there is a Hall effect sensor over here, and there is a little magnet over there. So this Hall effect sensor moves until it hits the magnet. And then once it hits the magnet, it knows it's in its home position. And then all of these programs are uh, distances from that home position. So now that we've saved our EEPROM states, if we hit this button, see, turntable lined up directly where we wanted it to go. And if I flip it again, should do a 180. And I know that doesn't seem like much, but that is really, really important because every time you use your turntable, you don't want to have to reprogram all of your positions. You want it to be done. So this is the underneath of the turntable, and first I'm going to get the electronics out of the way. So right now I have a breadboard and I have a motor controller. And what this breadboard does is it has a Cat5 Ethernet jack right here. And it allows me to take this Cat5 Ethernet jack and plug it into the control panel. And that sends the stepper motor signals to the stepper motor controller and it also sends the signals from the Hall effect sensor on the turntable over. So that's all of this does. Here we have a stepper motor driver. Um, I'll try to look up the number for this and maybe I'll put it in the video description. I'll have a pop up on the screen or something. But uh, this is just a basic stepper motor controller, nothing fancy. Just because I have it geared down so much, I don't need micro stepping or anything like that. So that's an overview of the electronics on this side. I'm going to now show you the heart and soul of the turntable, um, the actual motor that turns it. So right now what I've got here is a NEMA 17 stepper motor with a, I believe, 27 to 1 built-in gear reduction. So that means that stepper motor has to turn 27 times before one output turn of the shaft. And what that allows me to do is it, it, it allows the turntable to be a lot more uh, accurate as it turns. Since the turntable is so long, the more accuracy you have, uh, the better. Um, one thing I did run into an issue with is even though there is a 27 to 1 gear ratio reduction on the stepper motor, there's still a little bit of play in the shaft. So to get rid of that, I put a GT2 timing belt and pulley on there. So the timing belt and pulley then takes it to a 1 to 8, I believe, gear reduction again. So the little bit of play in the shaft from the output of the stepper motor is completely negligible once you step it down by 8. So that's what's going on with the belt and pulleys. Um, I also made a carriage, which you can see in orange, and that rides in a slot inside the blue 3D printed part. And these bolts, right there and right there, whenever you tighten them, it actually puts tension on the belt. So that's how I tension the belt. Uh, if anybody's wondering, these were all printed on an Ender 5 Plus. Uh, right now it's all printed in PLA, but uh, in the future I might do ABS just to make it a little bit more robust when I do the final version. This is another view angle of the motor mount underneath the turntable. And what I wanted to show here is all of these wires. What you can't see is there's actually a slip ring underneath this blue piece. Um, and it goes through the table to the turntable on the other side. Um, if you want to know more about the slip ring, you can look at my first video. I talked about it there. I used the same one in this design. All right, I've gone handheld mode for this, so I hope I don't make anybody seasick, but I figured it was kind of good to visually show how this is working instead of just seeing one side of the table or the other. So as I've been talking about, this is the bottom of the turntable. And right here, that shaft runs directly through this table, and it goes to the turntable itself. So let's look underneath it. Well, this is the underneath side. This is the top that we're going to. So that is the top of the turntable. I've just got it flipped upside down, but hopefully that gives you a better idea of how this is all working. If you're interested in the first iteration of the turntable build, a video link should be popping up now. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Have a great day.